look. Look at that. Look at that. That is straight up fuzzy, fuzzy hair. <laughs> Good morning. So I have hair. As you saw in the earlier clip, I am growing like a weed now, which is pretty exciting. Don't mind my like weird sounding voice. I have a little bit of a cold, or I'm getting a little bit of a cold, so I have a really bad sore throat. But I wanted to come on and show you Sans makeup, because I did have a little bit of makeup yesterday, which I had darkened my eyebrows a little bit. So this is where I'm at. As you can see, if I get really, really close. Um, this one's darker. It definitely has a lot more hair than this eyebrow. But I have a full row of under eyelashes, and then definitely have a good amount. I'm probably about halfway to full eyelashes now. And then a good amount of stubble. It's not really stubble, it is like, uh, I call them like duck feathers. They're just like baby duck feathers, just like really soft hair. I'm gonna go put on some makeup really quick and then come back and talk to you some more. So this is one eyebrow done. You can see it's just it's just a tint, so it just colors in the hairs that I already have there, which is pretty um, great. I have a lot of blonde hairs coming through, so I'm not really having to add any more of my pencils. I can just use this tint. A little mascara because they are long enough now this is me with well this is a little off but this one has more eyebrows that have come through and right up here is still a little sparse but let's see if I can add a little bit more a little bit better but I got mascara on and I don't know I'm feeling pretty good these days Just give you this little update and tell you that anybody that is going through chemotherapy right now it was about week four that it really so not so week four meaning I had my last chemotherapy on April 28th and then things started to really take off about four weeks after that because you still have to go through your whole three week chemo cycle where you're still losing hair. So probably it was actually around June 1st that it started to, I started noticing things more. Like I started noticing um, a lot more peach fuzz coming through and my eyebrows. It was mostly like just blonde eyebrows. Now the darker parts are coming in. And then I started seeing little sprouts on <laughs> my eyes and so I had somebody tell me that your lower lashes come in first which mine did they're probably almost back to my normal size and then my uh, uppers are about halfway there I am just over two months post last infusion so about five weeks post ending my three week cycle. So this is basically five weeks of growth and it just kind of like took off last week. It was amazing how fast it started to grow. So if you hear noise, it's 
Baker and Louie. But yeah, so it was like, kind of felt like overnight, it just flipped a switch and everything started growing again. So every day I wake up and like, I mean, obviously there's still a lot to come in um, before my whole head is covered, but it's like long enough on the sides and it's also really blonde in areas, either blonde or white. I don't know yet, but it's like laying down. So I'll take off my hat and it'll like smush to my head. So that's kind of fun. The other thing you get that nobody told me about was this like peach fuzzy. Um, well, nobody told me, but I did see a video from a gal who on Instagram who just went through or ended chemotherapy in I think December or January. And she did talk about the peach fuzz. So I knew that it was a possibility, but nobody told me about it um, other than me finding it. So you get a peach fuzz all over your body. Like, I don't know if you can see, probably can't see on my fingers, but there is a layer of just fuzz all over my like knuckles and my hands and my arms, everything. And then on my face, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's interesting. It's like coming down here. And then I've noticed it on my like shoulders and the back of my arms too, but I've heard that it falls out. So I, whatever, I don't really care. I am just so happy that I have hair back. Some of the things I'm using to help initiate this growth, and you know, this could be uh, controversial. I don't know. I believe in it. I think that they all work, but the, First thing I want to say is always make sure that you check with your oncologist and your doctor that it is okay for you to take these things. I have no idea how they interact with chemotherapy and obviously you don't want to risk having any complications with that. And I will link all of these below as well. So I started using the Ordinary. This is the multi-peptide serum for hair density and I use it twice a day. I put it on in the morning all over my scalp and then I put it on in the evening. I also had somebody gift me, I think it's called DB. I will link it below as well. It was a hair serum that I used before I used this, then a head massager. So it just kind of massages the follicles to stimulate them to start growing. So I highly recommend both of those and I'll link them again down below high peptide and lash and brow serum as well. Um, I put them on my eyebrows and my eyelashes every single day, about twice a day. Sometimes I forgot and I would just do once a day. I love it. I think it's super easy to apply. It's hard to say if it's really working or not because I don't, you know, I obviously can't do a side by side. There's not two of me to do this with. Maybe it's placebo effect, maybe not, but I, Thing. I'm pretty happy with them. So I am using this eyebrow mousse. It's right here. My mom got this for me. She was recommended it through a friend whose daughter went through chemotherapy and used this. And it just, it's an eyebrow tint. So it just tints the, eye the eyebrows that you have growing back in. I didn't start using this until I had something to tint. Before that, I was using my eyebrow pencils just to draw in eyebrows. Uh, although I don't think I was the best at it, but it still felt better than just having nothing. I am gonna try the Glossier. They have one that I've seen. I don't know that I'll ever go back to not using some kind of eyebrow darkener. I think it just adds a nice contrast. I've never been somebody who's super into makeup. I do very natural makeup. I think I look weird with heavy, heavy makeup, um, but I do love a dark, a darker eyebrow now. Like I'm very fair skinned, so I was horrible about skincare in my 20s and even 30s. Now I wear a daily face sunblock, but it's in my tint that I put on, which is by Ilia highly recommend this brand. I am obsessed with it and I'm obsessed with this. It's a super ser serum skin tint and it has a SPF 40 in it. And I put this on every day, even if I'm not going anywhere. It just like, I have a lot of like pigmentation now and that is one of the side effects of chemotherapy is you get like hyperpigmentation on your face. And uh, so I think it just gives me like a smoother 
look. I love their concealer as well. I just dab a little bit around uh, my eyes and kind of all over my face, uh, just to even out my complexion as well. So these I love for my actual eyelashes. I love the Honest brand. I try to use really clean products, I'm non-toxic, and this has a primer as well on the end, which I really like. Internally, I would recommend, um, again, check with your doctors. There are tons of skin, nail, and hair growth products out there, but I have used, or I'm using Biotin right now. Um, I'll link some of the things that I've used down below as well. So Biotin, I do AG1, which is like a green powder every day. Uh, if you watch YouTube, you have probably seen ads for it like crazy. I do think that I have had an increase um, amount of energy from taking AG1. Noticed a difference like overnight. I wasn't getting my afternoon slump. This is not sponsored by AG1 at all. I'm just telling you some of the things that have worked for me. And then I also made sure that I increased my protein. I eat meat. I didn't eat meat for a long time, but I feel like it does wonders for me. It just keeps me full longer. And also, uh, the amino acids in protein rebuild your muscles and hair growth. I will say the other thing that I've really noticed since being off chemotherapy and the steroids is a dramatic weight loss. I feel like my face shape is back to almost normal. Obviously it looks a little different because I don't have any hair so um, and I was also pretty thin prior to going into chemotherapy because I had had surgery two months earlier and I think I just lost a lot of muscle. I have a pretty lean body naturally but since I had my hysterectomy and gone, I've gone into menopause and now I'm not on my hormone replacement anymore, um, I have noticed that my muscle mass has greatly decreased it's easier for me to kind of it I fluctuate a lot more with my weight but the one side effect of this particular chemotherapy that I was on which was a mix of Paxil Taxil Paxil I think it's Paxil Taxil I just call it Taxil um, and Carboplatin is there is a steroid that's given with it uh, because Taxils is one of the top uh, chemotherapies that actually has side effects like aller uh, allergy side effects to it they give you a steroid and then Benadryl and then like a couple other anti acids so definitely steroids are known to make you gain weight um, plus there was just a incredible amount of edema like water weight that I gained which has like dissipated a lot so I feel really good I feel like a lot of my clothes are starting to fit me again and I will say that has been huge and me just feeling more and more like myself I'll be honest this has really really triggered my body dysmorphia but I don't know how it couldn't you go from one day having your hair feeling like yourself to literally the next day like your hair is falling out in clumps and if you choose to shave your head you look completely different and then over the course of the next couple months you lose your eyebrows your eyelashes you I didn't really start gaining weight until probably my third cycle and then I think I gained between I thought it was 30 pounds but I actually weighed prior to about 130 and then my last weight check-in was about 150 a couple weeks ago I don't really go by weight the number on the scale is not super important to me it is pretty in your face triggering when you have to see it every few weeks so I do try to have them like at, towards the end of chemo I was like just don't even tell me what my weight is anymore because I don't want to know honestly around week four I started working out a lot more again so I'm probably working out about five to six days a week but to be very clear my workouts are dramatically different than they were in my 20s and my 30s you know I focus more on like Pilates style my favorite workout right now is called P-Volve I will link all of my favorite workouts below so I do more like Pilates fusion style, a little bit of like bar. I stay away from a lot of cardio. My cardio is more walking. I do go on walks every day, sometimes two in the summer because I have a dog. But I definitely go on a walk every day right now to give Baker his 
exercise and myself. And then at the end of the day, I find that I don't want to just sit down and sit on my couch for the remainder of the evening. So I will go on another little walk. I was using an app called Lose It in the very beginning just to kind of um, count my macros and get back on track. Uh, but then the weight started coming off. I don't know what my actual weight on the scale is. I just mean my clothes started fitting me and my body started going back to looking like it had prior to chemotherapy. Like I definitely have like ab definition now and that is really nice. I feel like my legs have slimmed down, my arms, everything. It's a slow process and it's gonna be different for everybody. I think you have to be very patient with yourself. I still, I still feel like I'm not exactly where I want to be and I still struggle with not having any hair. Uh, I did get my ears pierced a couple days ago. I had my ears pierced back in my 20s. I think I got my ears pierced when I was like 14. And then when I was about 30, I started getting infections all the time, but probably because I was wearing cheap earrings. When I found out I was gonna lose my hair. I knew that I was gonna wanna get my ears pierced again. And my oncologist told me to wait until I was done with chemotherapy. I got it on Friday just so I can have like fun earrings as I go through all the various grow out phases. You know, it's interesting because through this process, I have met a couple gals on Instagram and we are all at different uh, phases of chemotherapy and post chemotherapy. One gal, I think she finished in November. Another gal finished a month before me then I finished and then the last gal finished last week. So she was a month after me or two months after me, almost two months after me. And so we are all going to get together next weekend and it'll just be really interesting. One of the gals who finished in November came to one of my markets and saw me and it was so encouraging to see where she was at. She had like the cutest little haircut, like all these curly, like um, uh, longer hairs on top and a full set of eyelashes, her eyebrows. So that was really encouraging. If I can leave you with any words of encouragement, it is just that it, you do come back to yourself. Obviously you're a different version of yourself. Like it's impossible to not have changed from this experience and you will continue to change. I feel like I, like I mentioned in I think my last video, I'm on the precipice of something. I definitely feel myself evolving and changing and don't know what that means yet and I don't necessarily know what it's gonna look like moving forward but I feel myself outgrowing some things and I just kind of have to wait and see what's what's trying to be born. So if you have any recommendations yourself feel free to leave them in the comments and don't forget to subscribe, like, and do all the things and I will see you next week.